All right, let us start. So hi everyone. I'd like to give a very warm welcome to all of you who are joining us here today at our APCA Open House. I know we have audiences from uh, Singapore, India, Philippines, Indonesia, and more. So it's very nice to have all of you here today. My name is Yanni, and I'll be taking you through this exciting session tonight. This evening, we have invited two special guests, Daniel Shi from LSCF and Michael Shi from ACCA. They'll be sharing some information about ACCA, career opportunities in the accounting and finance industry, current trends, and most importantly, tips on obtaining the ACCA qualification. So throughout the session, I'd like to ask everyone to not be shy to post any questions in the comments uh, throughout the presentation, because at the end, Daniel, Michael, um, and our education consultant will be happy to answer them um, during our Q&A session. So for those of you who are new to LSDF or who don't know us, I'll give a brief introduction about us. LSDF, also known as London School of Business and Finance, was founded in 2011 in Singapore. It has seen an exponential growth over the last 10 years, establishing campuses in the UK and Singapore. LSBF Singapore is a Platinum ACCA approved learning partner, which is the highest and most prestigious form of recognition of tuition providers' quality and success in teaching and supporting students throughout their ACCA qualification. So some of you might have doubts in obtaining the qualification itself. And in fact, there are many common misconceptions out there about ACCA, such as its restricted career options, or some say that ACCA only teaches you the accounting list and nothing else. Well, in fact, um, these are very far from the truth. I will now pass the time to Daniel, who will debunk the misconceptions and also shed insight about the emerging uh, career prospects in the accounting and finance industry. Hello, Daniel. Hi, thank you, Yanni. First, uh, let me share my screen. Hi, good evening. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm glad you're here um, because when you're here, you're interested in investing in yourself or your, your child's uh, education. Now, uh, ACCA is known as an internationally recognized professional accounting qualification. So, but like Yanni say, it doesn't mean that um, you have to do accounting. In fact, the ACCA training curriculum is quite wide ranging and very rigorous. So I'll be taking you through uh, some of these things that you'll be uh, learning if you take on the ACCA uh, journey. Now in this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I've seen uh, people losing jobs, but I've also seen my friends who have professional qualification they weathered this COVID-19 pandemic much better than the rest. So uh, some, in fact, did not suffer uh, economically. So instead of uh, losing their jobs, having a pay cut, <clears throat> some of them got, kind of some become even busier because of uh, COVID-19. Now, so, therefore, I'll be going through uh, some of this career that with a professional accountancy qualification like ACCA, what you can look forward to. Now, so of obviously number one uh, is to become an accountant. Now, however, um, accountant can be a starting point. It does not mean it will be the ending point. So uh, I started off as an auditor myself in the big four, but uh, I spent many years in the big four and then I joined Samsung as a general manager in the venture capitalist division. So we are doing actually a venture investment. And then after that, a few years later, I became a, a European listed company. So I was a Singapore managing director and then uh, eventually became the regional managing director. So, uh, and then from the accounting industry, I moved on to the venture capitalist industry and then the European listed company was in the IT industry. 
Now, so you can see on this slide that I show you um, the various uh, career that you can look forward to. Now, um, a business analyst will actually allow you to diversify from the accounting industry into the IT industry. Now, in the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we see a lot more online fraud and the banking industry in particular were actually ramping up their recruitment drive in compliance officer. So compliance with the banking regulations by MES and uh, internal policy. So as I mentioned to you, uh, eventually, if you like to stretch yourself, you can shoot for a CEO, CFO role in this the company. Now, and one of my students uh, actually went into a uh, special path known as corporate secretary. So corporate secretary is not a secretary, it's actually an officer of the company. Uh, typically for large listed company, a corporate secretary role is really important to help the directors to comply with uh, SGX regulation, companies act, getting the uh, shareholders management, uh, shareholder investment managed, and uh, also in terms of organizing the shareholders meeting. Now, um, a lot of big four uh, consultants actually have accounting background because in consulting, you do need to know the business and the business process in order to uh, give valuable advice to your client. Now, and then data analytics now is in the reach. So various university, in fact, actually come up with a data analytics degree. So um, a lot of the data analytics are in the financial world. So those, they typically look for people who are sensitive to number, who understand financial number. So uh, a lot of the accountants now actually upskill themselves into data analytics. Now, so as executive directors, as I mentioned, are the directors that run the company. Uh, CEO, CFO will be an example of executive directors. Now, so uh, for um, the Singtel, uh, being one of the largest uh, listed company in Singapore, the previous group CEO, Ms. Chua Sok Kun, um, initially started off in the accounting department as an accountant, then became the CFO. Then when uh, Mr. Lee Sien Yang resigned from Singtel, uh, they did a global search. In the end, uh, they promoted her to be the group CEO and she just retired last year. So uh, therefore, um, from an accountant, become a business manager. Now, so obviously you can stay in the accounting role, finance manager, financial controller, but by then, your focus will not be on accounting because you will have accountants assisting you. You'll be looking at financial management with the, uh, all the company, uh, managing banking relationships with the bank. So um, looking at financial instrument investment for the company. Now, one interesting area that is actually gaining a lot of interest now is forensic investigator. Now, as you probably noticed in the last few years, we have a lot more financial statement fraud in happening in Singapore. So the one of the more um, well-known case will be the CD Harvest Church uh, round tripping fraud. So uh, there were two accountants involved in that fraud. Uh, they were convicted and went to jail and then they lost a professional accounting qualification. Um, and the CAD officer investigating the fraud, they actually needed very, very experienced accountant who understand financial statement fraud how to do round tripping and how to detect round tripping. Now, um, and so CAD now is really, actually, if you go to CAD website, you might see they are actually also looking for um, accounting um, graduates to join them. So at the moment they have internal transfer. So for example, from uh, Inland Revenue, the tax investigating officer uh, being seconded over to CAD to help out with the financial statement fraud investigation. So from there, you can see, we can then move on to tax professional. So um, professional accountancy qualification at ACCA opens up door for you to join Inland Revenue or the big accounting firm as tax professional. So initially, most of us will be just doing tax compliance work, uh, how to report the tax properly, how to check the tax uh, submitted by the companies are correct or not. But eventually, those stay in the large accounting firm move on to tax planning advice. So they become tax consultant. They help the client to minimize tax in the legal way. 
and then the tax professional in Inland Revenue move on to tax fraud investigation. Now, so this are uh, actually just what is uh, happening in the market right now. They are still looking for people. Okay. Now, so some of the better known ACCM members in Singapore, they are in various fields. I just um, mentioned a few. So one of them is Mr. Lau Kam Yuan. Now, he's a partner in KPMG. Now, you can see he is actually a fellow member of ACCA. Now, so fellow member just being a senior member of uh, ACCA. So when you join ACCA first, you join an associate, then become a full member. Then after a while, you become a senior member. Then they call you the fellow member. Now, so this partner from KPMG, uh, you can see he is not just doing audit. He is now head of the risk consulting. So uh, if you saw what happened to the, the bank that actually allowed the Bill Huang uh, hedge fund to actually um, draw a lot of money and in the end had to do a margin call and then the risk manager was being terminated by the bank. You can see how important it is now in the financial world to do financial risk management, right? So these are very exciting for you. So Mr. Lam is in that area. Now the next person here, um, if you look carefully on the left, uh, her name is uh, Zhang Kuan. So she's the CEO and co-founder of a Bitcoin Exchange. So if you look at her career, when she started off, she was started off as an auditor in Singapore. And then we, she went on to uh, New York and joined one of the big five accounting firms at that time known as Arthur Anderson. So she went through financial field, eventually went to GIC. Then in 2013, she co-founded Bitcoin Exchange. So this is someone with an accounting background, uh, gaining different kind of experience through her career. So a good start actually helped you to also move uh, back better. Now the third person, um, not last but not least, is uh, Mr. Amos Ng. So, uh, Amos Ng, uh, ACC member since 2005. Uh, he's currently a council member of ACCA and uh, he's a CFO of a listed company, Local Corporation Limited. And you can see, although his uh, background is accountant, but he's actually in term, in, into merger and acquisition of the listed company. So, uh, and if you like the assignment of uh, merger and acquisition, so accounting will, will be a very good starting place for you to move into that direction. Now, so uh, these are some of the uh, well-known people in the ACC uh, union in Singapore, but beyond Singapore, you can, there will be a lot more. So like Air Asia CEO is also an ACC member, right? That's from Malaysia. So um, how do we then get there? Uh, if you're interested in this. So um, you need to join ACCA as a student member. So you need to join as a student member, then there'll be student uh, member registration fee and the annual student subscription fee. So when you're a student, then you can embark on the ACCA exam, but there's certain minimum entry requirement. Now there are different types of minimum entry requirement. So let me walk through you one by one. Number one is you have uh, A-level. Okay. So you have A-level, you pass your A-level, uh, or you have uh, invitation by the local uni to join, uh, to do the bachelor degree. Then you meet the minimum criteria. So you can join at the ACC qualification exam level. Now, if you don't have A-level, but you are in enrolled into polytechnic, so you completed the first year. Okay? So you're also uh, able to join the ACCA qualification exam. Now, the other one is those who completed the ITE higher NITEC accounting. So this will be the minimum qualification through uh, academic qualification. Now, for those that do not have this minimum academic qualification, then you can actually have another entry level. Now, this will be um, 
joining at something called the foundation in accountancy. So the short form is FIA. So you don't join at the ACC qualification level, you join before that, but you only need to take three subjects to finish this and you can join the rest of them in the ACC uh, qualification level. So uh, this do not need you to have those formal qualifications, right? No. So uh, this, this means uh, if you, for example, after O level, you have been going out to work and now you want to catch up with a study, you can, that is possible. Now, so um, how long does it take and how much must you do in order to finish the ACCA examination and become a member of ACCA and ha have a professional uh, accounting qualification and call yourself a Chartered Certified Accountant? Now, um, the number of subjects that you'll be taking in terms of examination, um, 13, but there are some exemptions available uh, depending on your uh, basic education qualification. So those from the, uh, for example, the accounting, accountancy degree from recognized university, they get a lot more exemption because quite a few subjects are considered as uh, similar. But if they come from uh, accounting, uh, from degree that is non-accounting, then they will get less exemption. So, uh, but the maximum you do will be 13 subjects. Now, and then how long does it take? Now we are talking about typical student who take between three to four years on average, uh, but there are students who did it much faster than that. So let me explain why in a minute. Um, okay. um, the, the reason is the ACC examinations are conducted four times a year, four times a year, March, June, September, and December. So each time, if you fill up to it, you can enroll for the examination. But if you feel you're not ready, you don't have to enroll to, for the examination. So there's flexibility in terms of uh, when do you want to take your examination and how many subjects you want to take it at one time. So, uh, and we can see some students uh, because they are not really um, having a lot of other commitment, they are able to take about three subjects per examination. So because of that, they are able to finish uh, in about uh, two years or slightly more than that. So I have a student with me. Uh, he started his ACCA when, uh, just before his uh, national service enlistment. So by the time he finished his national service, he more or less completed his ACCA examination. Uh, he could do it because he was posted to an army unit where he was allowed to take night off by his commander to come and attend lesson. And then when on those nights they, they didn't have lesson, he didn't have night duty, he was able to study. Now, so those will be the examination you have to take. So beside the examination, uh, to fully qualify as an ACCA member, you have to have three years of relevant working experience. So this three of relevant working experience can start anytime, not just uh, after your examination. So um, therefore, you do not just have uh, theory, you actually have practical experience before you become a full ACCA member. Then there's one module here, which is not part of the 13th examination, known as the Ethics and Professional Skills module. Now, so this I'll actually go on in a bit more detail in the next slide. Now, so in this next slide here, what you see is the journey, which is called a journey. So some people start from here, but some people start from here, right? Now, so, and some people may be able to start from here. So earlier on, I mentioned, if you do not have those minimum academic qualification, then you will start from here. So this level is the FIA level. Now for those who have the minimum entry requirement, like the A-level, uh, completed first year poly, then you start from here. So this is known as the beginning of the ACC qualification level. So these are divided into two stages called applied skills and uh, strategic professionals. So this is a different way of joining. Now, some of you may join from here 
if you do have a uh, accountancy degree from recognized university, so ACCA call that the fully accredited degree. Then you do not have to take the th first two stages. You start straight from the third stage, known as the strategic professional uh, stage. So this part here, this is the three year working experience. You can start as soon as you join as a student member of ACCA, right? Then the ethics of professional module, you can take any time as soon as you start the applied skill and, um, and right before you complete your strategic professional level. Now, so now I'm going to go in, into each of these to show you a little bit more detail. So for those who actually uh, join at the minimum entry level, so this is the A level and the first year uh, poly. Now you join at this level, you start from the applied knowledge stage. Um, so this will be, um, sorry, this is not the A level. Pardon. Now, so for those who um, are, need to do the foundation, so you start from here called accountant in business, management accounting and financial accounting. Now the examination is full computer based. So as soon as ready, you can uh, enroll for the examination. So most of us will start from here, known as the uh, applied skill level. So you can see this one here is, um, you need to start with something called the, uh, this is the A-level, this is correct. Yeah. A-level start from here, that's 13 subject. So the FIA is before this, right? This is A-level. So the first three subject, then after that, you go into applied skill. So this is the law paper. So you'll be learning company law, contract law, and different type of business form. Then there's a subject known as performance management. So things like the uh, budgeting and controlling the, the variance. Then the tax, tax is a very useful paper, even if you eventually do not want to practice as an accountant. So there will be uh, personal tax and business tax. Uh, and for those who uh, want to study the Singapore tax, it is available, uh, but uh, then the, the, the training provision will be by the Singapore training uh, providers such as us because if you um, in UK, they will teach you the, the UK tax, right? Then this is financial reporting. This is actually known as the accounting module. And this is the audit module for those who are working in audit. Uh, this will be extremely relevant. But all these are mandatory paper. Then there's a financial management, things like managing money. Um, that will be in uh, this. So this will be the one, two, three, four, five, six, six paper over here, plus three papers over here, that's nine. Right? So remember the minimum is 13, right? So you start from here, A level. Now, so the next, um, the strategic level here is divided into two groups. The first group is known as the essential group. Essential essentially means mandatory paper. So every ACCA candidate must do this two exam. The first one is known as the strategic business leadership. Now this module here focus on uh, inculcating your business acumen, uh, business strategy formulation. So it's uh, using case study, video case study to answer exam question, it is pretty, pretty exciting. Then the next one is strategic business reporting. Now it is still accounting, but it is a different aspect of accounting. Uh, strategic business reporting focus a lot more on your interpretation skill of your uh, financial report. So uh, not so much as a preparer of accounting, but an expert user of accounting. Then after these two essential paper, we have the another two, ACC call that the optional paper. So we call that the elective. So out of the four, you choose two of them that are relevant to you. It could be relevant to you because of your interest, but it can be, can be relevant to you because of your career. So for example, those who are thinking of embarking a long-term career in accountancy firm will opt for advanced tax and advanced audit. So this will prepare you to become a tax partner and tax uh, audit partner in the audit firm. So they go more in depth than the basic level, but they also go broader in breadth, like how to manage accounting firm risks uh, of liquidation and stuff like that. 
So for those who are more interested to become a financial controller, CFO, then you go for the advanced financial management, advanced performance management. So those then will go into things like uh, uh, derivative financial instruments, swap and all those. So uh, therefore, uh, it is quite flexible. It really depends on uh, what you're interested in. And this elective paper, you do not make, need to make a decision until you reach that level. So you do have a lot of time to discover your, your interests along the way. So that will be your ACCA qualification journey. So uh, as I mentioned, you also need to crop three years of practical experience in relevant role. But as I mentioned, you do not wait until you finish all the exam. It can be from the beginning of your journey. So for those who are now, for example, working in accounting, and just embark on the ACCA qualification, your working experience as you start, you can start counting as day one, right? So, and then by the time you finish your exam in three years, you also finish your three years practical experience, okay? Now, then there's one module, as I mentioned, in addition to the 13th exam, known as the Ethics and Professional Skill module. Now, this module here is very short, it will just take about 15 hours to complete, but it's very interesting. They give you, it is an online module, and what they are trying to show you is some realistic business situation for you to apply your ethical and professional communication skills. So this is to prepare, it's like uh, preparing you for work so that you're work ready, right? Now, so this will be all the things you need to do uh, to get your ACC qualification. So uh, with this, uh, I finished my uh, presentation. So uh, I'll pass it back um, to Yanni uh, for her to take us through the next session. Thank you, Yanni. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing your insights. Um, I'm sure we learned a lot about the journey, AC journey itself. Uh, so we have one question here from um, in the comments. Uh, does LSDF provide recorded sessions of classes to accommodate to students who are also working and studying ACCA part-time? Daniel, would you be able to answer that for us? Um, part of it, yes, I can answer. Um, so let me answer the technical part. Now, the technical part is um, our lessons uh, are recorded um, and saved and store. Every lesson is recorded. So uh, therefore, the, the recording is there. Now, so whether it is available, then uh, I understand from the, uh, the sales site, it depends on uh, what you sign up to. So apparently they have a, uh, what they call a bespoke program. And so it depends on what you sign up to. You might be able to avail yourself to the recording. So that part is the non-technical part. Uh, so I've been doing that um, um, recording uh, for a few years already. So um, as we give the lesson, the recording is done and uploaded. Uh, and so if you do have the access, you can view it. All right, now we have, thank you. Now we have another one. Is there any maximum attempt for each module? Um, okay, <laughs> yes. Uh, we generally see our students uh, do quite well. So, uh, but obviously um, the, the ACC exam is not easy. So um, it is possible that you might fail in, in your first attempt. So you can go back. Now, in terms of maximum attempt, uh, not really in terms of maximum attempt. So if you fail, for example, this uh, module called audit, then you can keep going back at it. But ACCA does has a maximum time frame that you should complete the entire journey. Mm -hmm. now, so this maximum time frame is pretty long. Usually, most people don't reach that limit. So uh, as to the latest policy, how long will that be? Then uh, I'll later on leave it to um, a speaker from ACCA, uh, Michael. Uh, he'll be able to give us the latest uh, time limit that you need to complete your ACCA journey. All right, thank you, Daniel. Um, we will answer the rest of it near the end of the session, okay? So keep your questions coming. Don't worry, we'll get to them. Okay, now we'll have Michael from ACCA, who is also an uh, alumni from LSDF, um, who is 
also taught by Daniel. So let's welcome Michael to share a little bit more about his ACTA journey and experience. Hey, Michael. Hey, Yenny. Hey, everyone. Just a second. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen right now. Good evening, everyone. Um, special shout out to Daniel. Uh, thank you for um, teaching me the audit and assurance paper um, back in the 2014. Um, managed to pass it in my first attempt, thanks to your close guidance. Well done, well done. Yes, <laughs> yes. And um, I recall the advanced audit assurance paper. It's a um, very interesting paper whereby you can be a prize winner as long as you score 60 marks <laughs> or even below. Yeah, really, um, even till today, I mean, five years down the road, I still recall uh, Mr. Daniel's um, teachings. Um, he also shared about his real-life um, experience in the Big Four and um, Korean conglomerate, a uh, really enriching um, experience uh, learning from him. Um, I would say I always look forward to go to lesson, and although audit can be quite a draining um, topic, uh, but Mr. Daniel never fail to add in that additional practical sharing. Yeah, so special shout out to Mr. Daniel. Um, and good evening to everyone over here. Um, thanks for spending your Friday evening um, attending this uh, LSBF open house. Okay, so my portion will be a bit more personal in nature um, as an ex-LSBF alumni and also a staff from the ACCA Singapore office. Yeah. So a brief uh, introduction about ACCA. Um, I feel there is a compelling need to share about the organization culture uh, and the, com the professional qualification you are signing up for as well. Yeah, um, our three core values include inclusion, integrity, and innovation. As you can see, we, are, we have subscribed to the UN United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and we are always at the front to lead inclusion. And about ACCA, we have um, 227,000 members worldwide, um, 544 students worldwide as well. And as for employers-wise, we have 7,571 approved employers. This shows the global reach and network ACCA has and will provide to you when you sign up for the ACCA journey. And here, here is my LS, we have Story. Unfortunately, I haven't um, taken much photos of myself studying, um, but this is one of my fondest memory of um, my ACC journey, which is to graduate. And the graduation ceremony was also organized by LSBF. Um, as you can see on the right, um, maybe I'll start from the left. Yeah, um, taking a photo with my tax lecturer, Yvonne, who is a very experienced and good lecturer in tax, also from LSBF. And uh, in the middle, as you can see, um, managed to find a photo with Daniel as well, yeah, um, during the graduation ceremony. And on the right, uh, Mr. Sami, who teaches uh, topics like financial reporting and financial management. Uh, Mr. Sami is one of the um, best lecturers in uh, financial management and financial reporting. And why I say best is because he's so exam focused and geared towards um, helping you pass the ACC um, qualification. And he's very personal in nature as well can always go towards him um, to ask any questions relating to uh, the qualification, the questions about financial reporting standards and also financial management. And some of my classmates even ask him questions revolving about career as well. So yeah, the entire LSBF experience can be summarized in a few words. Firstly, very value adding. Secondly, um, very accompanying thing to my personal schedule. As late, I will share later, it is actually um, a very enriching journey whereby I'm able to slot classes in my full-time work schedule as well. And lastly, of course, the friends I've made over there, um, lecturers like Yvonne, Daniel, and Sami continue to be mentors and friends even after the journey as well. Oh yes, so right now I'm trying to be a bit uh, more com comical. Uh, I actually went to Google what is the benefits of the ACC qualification so as to be uh, more neutral in this sharing. So here are the seven solid reasons um, and I can relate to them too. 
um, you gain a diversified range of knowledge. Um, secondly, it's recognized globally. Thirdly, as you can see, as from our members and fellows, um, you can leverage on the knowledge and experience and network to start your own business, building lucrative careers. Um, and this um, part about easy to manage and cost effective, um, as you can see, as you do your research in the various professional qualifications and also the um, accounting academic degrees, um, you realize ECC is actually um, very cost effective. You're able to plan your tuition with uh, platinum institutions like LSBF and uh, managing with your full-time work schedule as well. So let me share with you my experience, um, how ACC has allowed me to transit from government step board into the banking industry and also um, being um, in human resource consulting and finally right now in business development. So when I started, um, my ACC journey, I was actually a credit analyst with our Singapore government um, state board, Land Transport Authority. Still recall the days whereby um, I work in the day and um, go to classes in the night um, with LSBF. And um, through this journey, after I complete my ACC qualification, um, LTAs um, actually acknowledge that uh, ACC is a very rigor rigorous and technical qualification and they actually um, offered me a promotion into a finance business partnering opportunity where I deal with um, financial planning and analysis with 50 business centers, uh, managing projects from autonomous vehicles, building new rail lines and also their latest um, active mobility project. So during then, um, if I recall correctly, in 201314 period, we are very into the bicycle sharing project. And having that finance um, age granted to me by the ACC qualification, I was able to value add to the engineers and project managers in planning their bicycle projects across Singapore. Yeah, after spending a good six years in Land Transport Authority, I made a move into the banking industry. And during that, I was very anxious. I was wondering whether six years of public sector experience is very, is applicable in the banking industry. But thankfully with the ACC, qualification, um, especially papers in financial management and also the network you get while networking in the various um, sub-interest group bodies like ACC, Gen X, and also exposure to mentors. I managed to transit smoothly into the banking industry. As you can see, one of my proudest moments in UOB was that I won the top rookie award as well. Um, I must really give credit to the ACC um, qualification and also the connections that allowed me to make this transition into the private sector smoothly. And later on, I joined Michael Pitch as a, in a role in, as a headhunter, um, helping me to senior finance professionals. And during that, I recall my boss was sharing with me that um, I have very good technical knowledge, which allows me to understand my clients' needs very well. Uh, for example, what does a good credit controller require? allowing them to collect debts across the region and also um, an expert internal auditor. Yeah, what are the experience required and technical skills required for them to perform the function um, expertly as well. So the qualification has allowed me to do human resource consulting too. I guess what I'm trying to say right now is that going back to the um, Google that I did just now, um, the diversified range of knowledge and skills. I am a living example of how the qualification and network allowed me to transit across government sector, banking, and also right now in business development. Yeah, so along the way, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat box um, um, so that we can uh, tackle it later on. Yeah. Okay, so today, um, I mean, a huge kudos to Daniel who explained on the ACC qualification in depth on how you can begin and complete the journey. So today I'm here to value add to um, the attendees as well, um, sharing with you the career opportunities available in our ACCA career portal. As you can see, I did a quick um, snapshot of the companies that are hiring through our career portal as well. Um, they are our approved employers. 
Yeah. So uh, we have this page called the uh, ACCA Careers. Uh, there's a QR code right there. You can take out your phone right now to scan the QR code and it will direct you into the career portal page. And there you will find the job listings um, that are available uh, for ACCA members, affiliates, fellows, and students. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to do a live sharing of opportunities. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Great. Can anyone give me a shout out if you can see my screen? Yep, we can see. All right, thanks, Yeni. Hello. Okay. So these are the um, jobs available in Singapore for ACCA members, fellow, and also affiliates. I'm just going to do a quick uh, run through of the jobs. As you can see, when I navigate, of course, you need to select um, the keyword Singapore so that you'll get more. Um, the Singapore jobs out. We have almost 3,000 over jobs um, across the globe, uh, ranging from APEC to um, Australia as well. So as you can see over here, um, BDO is hiring for tax uh, associates and PwC is hiring for risk assurance. And um, in the next few um, examples, I'm going to show you how, what's the link between the qualification and how it equips you to perform competently in these roles. So over here, I'm going to share with you the opportunity with PwC. Um, can anyone help me confirm whether uh, you can see this PwC page over here? Yeah, we can see. Okay, thank you. I'm just afraid when I go across tabs, it might not surface. Okay, so PwC right now is um, hiring for the Financial Services Assurance um, Associate. And in assurance and audit, um, in the ACC audit assurance paper, it equips you with the auditing skills and knowledge required for you to perform in these roles. So as you can see, you'll be involved in a broad range of statutory audit assignments. And for you to be involved in statutory audit assignments, you have to be equipped with the local audit knowledge so that you can uh, be more competent and professional in performing this audit. And um, don't worry, I mean, um, right now we have Daniel here and um, LSBF, he'll be able to um, train you and educate you and beef up your audit knowledge in, and for you to slowly um, transit into this professional capacity. And moving on, right, right now in EY, we can see that they're hiring a tax technology and transformation um, consultant, yeah. And in ACCA, we have the tax paper to um, equip you with the basic uh, tax knowledge, whether it's corporate or individual. And in the advanced tax paper, you'll gain knowledge about tax advisory. Yeah. So a quick run through, um, I'm conscious of time as well. Um, and Citibank, yes, they are hiring a financial planning and analysis, um, which is the VP level, um, overseeing the Hong Kong and Singapore market, fp and a was something that I touched on back in Land Transport Authority. And what papers are linked towards fp and a That will be your uh, performance management and the strategic business leader paper, whereby you will analyze financial reports and numbers and costing and um, basically data from the system to see how you can use data to help your senior stakeholders make strategic decision. Yeah, so we can see over here, UOB is hiring for risk management that will be applicable when you study your financial management paper. And also in GREP uh, right now, they are 30, hiring 35 jobs um, linking to finance and accounting, linking back to today's topic about emerging um, jobs in accounting and finance. Um, what we can say confidently is that in Singapore, the finance accounting market is Blooming, yes. So I'm going to go back to my slides right now. Just go and check out the chat. Mm, there will be a few questions which we'll tackle later on. So I'm back to my slide right now. I'm just going to do a quick summary on why ACCA, okay? Um, firstly, 
purpose and values. Secondly, um, having that global advantage, as you can see previously in the slide that I shared with you, we have members in high financial positions around the globe. Um, thirdly, employability, as um, illustrated from the ACCA careers author that I shared with you just now. And fourthly, flexible learning. Um, late, as you can, as you heard from LSBF's presentation right now, there are plenty of options for you to opt for, whether is it online learning, blended learning, classroom learning, learnings that, are, that can be customized and be fitted into your schedule as well. So I'm just going to um, move on to the Q&A. Okay, um, let me see. Okay, maybe I can start with the question that was asked earlier about the, how many times you can uh, attend for the paper. Okay, right now the generic guideline is about um, seven years. And as you know, one year there's four sittings. Lah. Yeah, so if you do the math, it's about 28 times, but obviously, um, we will not want you to attend 28 times. Lah. And what Daniel said just now, LSP is equipped with many skillful lecturers. Uh, and personally, as a student, uh, you can use our ACC study planner to clear the paper at one go. Okay, that's from one June. Okay. And Kain has asked, um, is a BA degree in accounting essential or professional certificates uh, like ACCA uh, qualification is enough? I think Sophia also asked about um, whether ACC is equivalent to a master's qualification. Both questions can be answered in the same time. Yes, ACC is actually acknowledged as a master's level qualification based on the UK education framework. Um, later on, I will share in the group chat uh, on this. And kind questions um, is about the business uh, degree whether it's essential, I'll answer this in a more employability context, okay? Um, when you get a degree, it gives you versatility to transit across um, non-financial accounting roles, but I guess I'm a living example. I do not possess a degree in accounting, but yet I can use the ACCA qualification to transit across roles from government sector to banking, and also right now in business development, and don't forget um, human resource consultancy. Okay, please ask about um, degree of finance accounting um, have exemptions. Okay, we have the ACC exemptions calculator. Uh, you can just do a quick Google on it. Um, right there, you can key in your existing degree, uh, the name of the university, and also the graduation date. Typically, a degree in accounting um, can grant you up to nine exemptions. Okay. okay, Shannon asked about the rec recording. Um, this question I will pass on to Yanni to answer later. Okay, well, I tackle the uh, more technical question right now. Okay, um, the time frame to finish ACC. Okay, I would say typically um, a comfortable time frame would be within three to five years. Yeah, so um, as long as you take um, tuition with platinum approved providers and also plan your study um, properly and be disciplined, um, you'll be able to finish within three to four years. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Jessica asked about the validity of the ACC so after completing it. Um, when I received my ACC professional qualification cert, it is valid um, and I, I, I wouldn't say end of the time, but <laughs> yeah, it will be valid as long as you have the cert. Um, however, I think there is a deeper question um, underneath this because upon completing the ACCA qualification, you'll receive the affiliate status and um, to maintain affiliate and work towards membership, um, there is annual CPD requirements um, for you to accomplish and also working experience as well. Okay, so um, just make sure that you clock your ethic hours and also um, CPD training accordingly and you'll be fine. Yeah, you wouldn't have to do redo any exams. Yeah. So I have a question um, privately asking me about uh, work, whether is it possible to study ACCA while working full-time um, as an audit assistant in one of the big four? 
the answer is yes. Um, I still recall last time when I attended classes, I have many friends from Ernst and Young who are undergoing the audit executive program um, while they work and study concurrently. And right now they're actually actively hiring. Um, do give me a special shout out or email me. Um, I will be able to link you up with them on this. Okay, I think there's one very popular question about um, converting into CA Singapore. Okay, from one June and Priest. Okay, right now the short answer is actually no, but in the longer term wise, we are in talks with SAC and um, ISCA as well. So right now there is actually a queue to renew the reciprocal membership agreement. Right next is actually um, our Australian counterpart. So once they are cleared, we are the next in line. And um, within the next few years, it shouldn't be a big issue. Yeah. And don't forget, um, the ACC qualification is actually a global one. Um, when you work for global companies, um, that will be actually an added advantage. Yeah. Jessica asking, is asking about the CPD requirements. So I'm going to take this one last question before I hand the mic back to Yanni. Okay. Um, CPD requirements, um, you have to take um, a number of, uh, I think between two to four ethic hours and the rest of it about 16 to 24 hours on technical topics like um, your IFRS and whatever job you are in. Let's say if you're in taxation, do take taxation related courses as well. Do not do it um, last minute in December because it can be quite stressful and taxing. Do plan your CPD along the way in future in advance, uh, plan it in your less peak periods for more enjoyable and good learning experience. Okay, so with that, um, I'm going to end my presentation and uh, hand it back to Yeni. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your valuable thoughts, insights, and uh, tips on APC. I'm sure, I hope that everyone um, has learned more about, you know, the upcoming uh, job creation and the emerging uh, industry and in the accounting and finance industry and I hope everyone also kind of got a grasp of what uh, the learning learning ACC journey is like so um, let's see do we have any more questions okay there was one question about the session so yes this session is rec uh, recorded uh, live on Facebook you'll be able to access it through our social media channels later on uh, Yanni, there's a question on the chat that we have not answered yet. Um, it's from, uh, let me see, I think it's from Serene. Okay. Um, can the work question, yes. Okay. Can the work experience from a non-public company be recognized as ACCA's working experience? Yeah, I think that will pass to, uh, we'll pass to Michael. Okay, Michael. Okay. Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Um, the short answer is yes. Um, we have a very um, good team, good membership team here in Singapore, uh, headed by Mecho. Um, of course, the experience has to be valid as well. Yeah. So you can't be working in a random sales role and to be cocking the work experience as well. And um, all you have to do is to get your reporting officer to certify your work experience, um, which is related to finance, accounting, budgeting, taxation, or any fields related to the competency framework ranges of uh, the full spectrum of financial accounting activities. So myself, I've built my base uh, in financial planning analysis and also asset management, yeah, and also credit analysis. So based on these three zones of financial um, experience I've managed to acquire my uh, ACCA membership yeah so um, I guess there is a um, deeper part of this question which can be addressed um, offline so that we can analyze your non-public um, area of work to see whether is it applicable to clock it under your working experience All right, um, I have a private message here. I'll just read out the uh, question. I sought my ACC studies uh, quite a long time ago. Do you have any tips on how I can restart my learning journey? 
Okay. Uh, I, I can answer this, but Daniel, would you like to um, chip in a little as well, given your um, experience dealing with um, a huge range and spectrum of students? Yes, I, I can address the, the learning part. I think you can address the ACC policy part. <laughs> in terms of ACC policy, when will the person have to restart? How to restart? Okay, so the ACC policy of um, starting restarting, right? Um, it would be best answered if you can email me directly. Lah. So I can help you check your records to see what is the best possible way to help you restart the journey. Because um, depending on when was the last time you take your papers and also whether there is um, so-called lapse in uh, membership fees as well, um, contact me directly. Um, I'll assure you that I'll find the best possible way to resolve, um, to help you resume the study journey as well. Thank you for that because uh, it's the policy um, that we need to adhere to because you, if you, you have stopped for a long time, certain paper that you took la last time may not be recognized anymore mm. uh, because um, of uh, the time changes. Mm. Definitely. Uh, so you may have to retake even those uh, like core paper accounting again, mm. depending on how long the lab is. And uh, you also recognize over the years the ACCA examination, the subject module have changed. So like uh, we have now strategic business leadership, we didn't have before. And before that, we have something called the corporate governance. And now it's uh, an, another paper called strategic business. And then they merge into this. So therefore, there are certain rules and regulations that ACCA put in place to see whether those can still be met over. So therefore, the, the best tips really is to, like Michael suggests, get in touch with ACCA to establish your baseline. Then from there, we'll know how many more subjects you do need to take. Then we can come up with a study plan for you. Yeah, back over to Annie. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Do we have any more questions here? Yeah. All right. Uh, we have some questions about exam structure. Can I find out more about the current exam structure? Is it online based during this COVID period? Can you share with us a little bit more in regards to this? So this would be the ACC exam structure. Would Michael be able to address it? Yeah, sure. Um, apologies, could you re repeat the, the second part of the question again? Uh, yes. Can I find out more about the current exam structure? Is it online based since it's a COVID period? Mm. Yes, so right now, um, there will be no more paper exams. Um, exams will be taken from the computer-based centers. Uh, I guess, is a good opportunity for me to highlight that um, the transition towards um, computer-based exams is actually a very good move because as you transit into the working environment, um, you seldom have to do your accounts using pen and paper or um, provide consultancy service using pen and paper as well. So um, in short, the exams will be taken in the computer-based centers and in the event of any um, particular lockdowns or I mean touch wood, um, there will be private um, exams um, accessible from your laptop as well. Yeah, I think it's called remote examinations. Yes, apologies, uh, there was a slight mind block over there. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> that answered uh, one June's question, probably to me. All right, so let's see. Okay, someone asked, I joined the meeting late. How can I access the meeting recording? So we addressed this earlier. It is a live session recorded um, on Facebook. It will be shared across all of um, LSVF social media channels later on. So you'll be able to access it later. All right, so if you have any questions about fees, um, uh, you could actually uh, email us directly. Uh, later, I'll put, uh, you can see our, actually our email address is at the top. Anything fees related, all right? So if we don't have any more questions, okay, last minute questions. Any more questions for Michael Daniel? If it's no more, then we will actually wrap up the session. So as we come towards the end of our open house, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us this evening.
Um, we hope you took away some very meaningful information that is useful to you, whether you're thinking of starting your journey or restarting your journey, or any tips on how to um, be successful in your journey, in your APCA journey. So if you have any questions, uh, again, please email us uh, at sgmarketing at lsbf.edu.sg. You can find our email address at the top of the chat. We'll be happy to assist you there. Uh, so everyone, please, thank you again. Uh, please stay safe and have a great evening. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.